Hi folks, I'm Kerry Farr. Welcome to In Your Corner. Hey, if you watched the program last week, you saw the amazing, simply amazing testimony of Dr. Ming Wang. Dr. Wang, as a young man, lived in communist China, and he had a chance to come to America. And when he got to America, he was an evolutionist. He didn't believe in creation. He didn't believe in God. His faith was in science. But as he went to medical school and started studying the human eye and the human brain, he determined that they were far too complex to have happened just by chance. He learned that life comes from life. And today he's going to talk about science and faith. Are they friends or foe? So you absolutely want to stick around and hear this amazing story today. Dr. Wang, pick up. Are science, is science and faith friends or foe? Thank you, Kerry. You know, um, today, in 21st century, with the rapid development of science and technology, with iPod, uh, iPhones, and uh, you know, satellites and all these things, space shuttles. Science is transforming every aspect of our lives. At the same time, that science often comes into conflict with our faith and moral ethical principles. For example, what to do with stem cell? Do we, use stem, do we conduct stem cell research and fetal tissue research? If we do conduct fetal tissue research and stem cell research, how we can justify because the Bible says that human life is sacred. But at the same time, if we don't, then how do you face with the patients? Now, Doc, let's, let's stop for just a minute. Some people might not understand, in order to do fetal tissue uh, examination like you're talking about, the baby has to be killed, right? Right, especially in stem cell, embryonic stem cell. In order to conduct embryonic stem cells, you have to kill the embryo. If you have to do the fetal tissue research, you have to kill the fetus for the benefit of adult. And uh, so that's mor morally wrong. So you were, you were wrestling with that. You, and you were a Christian now, but you were said, something is wrong with this. Right. So we should not touch the baby for the sake of helping adult. We should not destroy a life for the helping the other life. And uh, that's the wrong thing to do as a Christian. But at the same time, what makes the situation very difficult is many of the medical advances in recent decades have shown that the treatment for major human illnesses, such as Alzheimer's disease, Parkinson's disease, macular degeneration, and diabetes may po possibly could only come from studies of early stage of human life, such as embryo and fetus. And why, why is that so, Doc? Why is that? Because these cells, embryonic cells and fetal tissue cells, they have the most amount of potential to develop into any organ, any tissue. So in order to treat those major human diseases, such as Alzheimer's and Parkinson's, which are degenerations, in the root of structure of our human body, we have to use root treatment costs, such as using early tissue cells to treat. So but at the same time, that, as I said, it is the wrong thing to do as a Christian, especially to affect the baby or kill a baby to helping an adult. But what, you, what should we do? If we say no to stem cell fetal tissue research, what do we do if, if, um, if our own parents, our own uncle and brothers. I, I right. I lost my mother to Alzheimer's. So what you're saying is that we have a dilemma. The dilemma is that on, on one hand, we can, we can kill a child, a fetus in the mother's womb, and take those stem cells and help someone who is suffering from Alzheimer's or diabetes or Parkinson's disease. So those people that aren't of faith are in favor of that, but people of faith don't feel like we should destroy life. So how, how do you reconcile the fact that you have a dilemma? How do you work around that, Doc? So if we don't uh, conduct research and on these major human diseases such as Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, diabetes, and macular degeneration, then does it mean that God wants us to just stop researching and stop improving the quality of lives? Because most of the uh, improving medicine comes from research. So here, this sharp conflict situation, conflicting between science and faith. And I truly believe the conflict between science and faith is one of the, and how to resolve that conflict, how to find a way, is one of the most important questions that facing mankind in the 21st century. 
with the development of science and technology. So I was in that situation about 16 years ago. I was a young student, I was studying, and I wanted to study corneal wound healing. And I found that the baby healed much better. When they got injured, they can heal without scar. But an adult in the healing process will develop scar, and when the scar is on the cornea, that's blindness. Mm. So I want to help my patients who have suffered injuries and who develop blindness due to cornea scar. At this, and recognizing the baby can heal so well, but I don't want to touch the baby. So how can you do fetal research without touching the baby? So it was a very agonizing moment, as if there was no way out. I pray and I ask God, what is the solution? What is that you want us to do? Surely, I don't believe that God wants us to stop research and stop improving the quality of life and stop helping those adults who have injuries and traumas and getting blind. And um, James 1.4 said in the Bible that persistence will complete you. And the key thing is that when things are difficult, and I think actually that's a true test of faith, the strength of faith, is not when things are going well, when things are not going well, when the, when the solution is not obvious. Can we have enough strength in our faith and beliefs, believing that the solution is there, we may not know yet, but God has put it there. Wow. Well, I, I, I know that you have a solution, and you're going to share that with us in just a moment. Folks, you want to hang around and hear Dr. Wang's amazing discovery because this could literally save millions of lives. Listen, I feel like God is calling me to teach those of you how to do what God has placed you here on earth to do. I feel like everybody has a story and that you need to share your story with a worldwide audience. I want to encourage you to put your story in the form of a book. I've written nine. Three of them have been Amazon category bestsellers. What if I could show you how to write an Amazon bestseller? Not only write a bestseller, but write a book that would produce an extra stream of income for you and your family each and every month. Not only produce an extra stream of income, but allow you to minister to others. Hey, I want to encourage you to write your story and put it in the form of a book. I have a free webinar called Create Your Own Book. And I want you to attend this webinar so that I can show you how to produce and create your own book, publish it, and get it out there and reach a worldwide audience. All you need to do is go to our website, inyourcorner.tv, and right on that very home page underneath a video, you will see where it says, click here for free webinar. Folks, we're back with Dr. Wang. And Dr. Wang had found himself in a dilemma. Here he was, a man of faith that was noticing that stem cells helped in healing some diseases. But in order to use stem cells, a child generally had to be killed to do stem cell research. So he was looking for a solution that would help save babies' lives. And, and Dr. Wang, what did you discover? I was agonizing over the moment. I spent hundreds of nights in the laboratory looking at the cornea scar, the blindness, the adults, patient needs help, or the tissue studies, but at the same time realizing that I want to figure out how the little baby can heal. Can I do it without touching the baby? And uh, I almost gave up in Thai fetal wound healing research because it's, there seems to be no solution. I pray about it, and the Bible said, James 1.4 said that, persistent will complete you. And uh, so I persisted. I didn't give up. And I plugged along and every day and night, I, it was a 16 year long course. And um, we stumbled upon uh, this piece of tissue called amniotic membrane. So you know, when a baby is born, the baby comes out the sac called amniotic membrane, which is surround the baby before the birth of the baby. And after the child is born, the amniotic sac always collapses onto the placenta and gets discarded. 
So an idea that came to us, perhaps, can we uh, recover the amniotic membrane, which is used to surround the baby and provide the magical heating process to the baby, and harvest the membrane back, and is it possible we can do something with it? And so I went to um, the, the doctors who have you know, helped delivering babies, and I got the mother signed consent and got this amniotic membrane, which is always discarded anyway, and uh, took back to the laboratory, and we peel out this piece of membrane, which used to surround a child before birth, and we experiment with it, and we bioengineer the membrane into a contact lens. You turned it into a contact yeah, it's lens. it's a baby membrane contact lens. Wow. And then we put this baby membrane contact lens onto adult injured eyes to recreate a fetus-like environment on the adult eye. So my thinking was, uh, is it possible by doing that, can we um, regenerate the fetal scarless healing wound, proce wound healing process that every one of us used to have before birth? We just got lost it as we become adult. We're s uh, here with scar now. So by putting the maybe membrane on, can we kind of re-invoke our scarless fetal wound healing process in each one of us? So we, I um, did a treatment and studied uh, many, many years of research. And um, we put this membrane onto adult injured eyes for two weeks. And then after two weeks later, we create a fetus-like environment. And so hopefully the eyeball, the adult eyeball underneath the membrane will heal like a baby without scar. So two weeks later, when we remove the membrane, instead of seeing a blind, scarred eye, we see an eye clear. It and works. vision. Wow. And when the laboratory was celebrating the scientific achievement, and uh, we got the two U.S. patents and uh, uh, the amnia membrane contact lenses, and all, we were all joyful. But to me, it meant so much more because it's validation of the principle that God does want us to do research, does want us to improve the quality of lives, but he wants us to do in the right way. In this case, he wants us to use this piece of membrane called amniotic membrane, which used to surround baby, give baby the scarless wound healing process ability, but the membrane is discarded anyway after birth of the baby, and that's the piece of membrane. That's a God-given opportunity to advance science without compromising our moral, ethical, faith principles. So when the laboratory was celebrating the scientific achievement, and uh, to me, it means so much more. It's a testament, it's a validation of the fact that God doesn't want us to research and do it right. So well, I feel that God was up there looking down and say, saw that. I told you. And gave you that idea. Did, will this work with other diseases? Yes, we're exploring, expanding the amniotic membrane, contact lens work, and we're working with U.S. military uh, to see whether we can create a sheath of membrane, put on adult, uh, you know, uh, burn soldiers' body, because burn victim, our soldiers on the war front, they get debilitated later, not so much from the initial injury, it's from the disfiguring, scarring process afterwards. So if we can inhibit the scar formation in burn victims in our soldiers, it will help so many soldiers. So your findings determine is science and faith uh, friend or foe? We show that they are friends, and not only they are friends, if we as Christians and the scientists keep open mind, allow God to guide our work, but at the same time explore every corner, be persistent, be patient, believing that God has created the world, there is a solution. It may not be obvious and clear to us at the time, doesn't mean that it's not there, but we just have to keep on seeking. And I believe by allowing science and faith to work together rather than against each other, we can develop the synergy, we can identify possibly new and creative solutions that we don't know about to the problems in our lives. My goodness, that's amazing. Dr. Wayne, we're going to have you come back in another segment because you're a, an accomplished musician, and we're going to have you play your instrument coming back, but is there, we've got about a minute and a half left in this segment. Is there anything that I haven't asked you that you want to share with our audience today? I would say as an eye doctor, I feel so privileged to be a part of the lives of many of our patients. You know, uh, Mo the Moldova orphan that we brought from Moldova two months ago, she was bl born blind. She was one year away from being kicked out of the orphanage and could possibly end up in human trafficking and being a, in, a, in a prostitution. 
And with God's blessing, working with Christian missionaries, uh, she was brought to this country, and through faith and through prayer and through medical technology, we were able to restore her sight. And uh, she saw herself for the very first time. And we c caught that moment when she saw herself. She looked in the mirror, and she started moving. And the person in the mirror started moving, too. And she realized, that's her. And uh, having never seen herself, she was so shocked, and she uh, screamed uh, in Romanian, the language she used, and, uh, which means, I'm so pretty. And so I think it's a privilege and honor, it's a blessing that uh, God has put me in a position to help patients and to be with them at the moment when they come from darkness to light. Dr. Wang, thank you so much for being on today's program. Listen, I feel like God is calling me to teach those of you how to do what God has placed you here on earth to do. I feel like everybody has a story and that you need to share your story with a worldwide audience. I want to encourage you to put your story in the form of a book. I've written nine. Three of them have been Amazon category bestsellers. What if I could show you how to write an Amazon bestseller? Not only write a bestseller, but write a book that would produce an extra stream of income for you and your family each and every month. Not only produce an extra stream of income, but allow you to minister to others. Hey, I want to encourage you to write your story and put it in the form of a book. I have a free webinar called Create Your Own Book, and I want you to attend this webinar so that I can show you how to produce and create your own book, publish it, and get it out there and reach a worldwide audience. All you need to do is go to our website, inyourcorner.tv, and right on that very home page, Underneath a video, you will see where it says, click here for free webinar. Hello, I'm Dr. Ming Wen, and this is Carlos Andriga, composer and classical guitarist. And uh, Carlos will be playing classical guitar, and I'll be playing Chinese violin, or Hu. It's a two-string instrument, and we'll play for you an ancient Chinese piece called The Big River.
And the second piece that we'll play for you is a piece that transcends all culture, all ethnicities, and all nations. And um, it's the reason that w- while we're here, while we have the life we have, it's someone we all should thank. And uh, again, Carlos, classical guitar, Dr. Wang here, and uh, Chinese violin, Erhu. <laughs> Thank you. Dear friend, have you ever felt like your life was on the ropes? Well, I want you to stick around because we have a very encouraging word for you. Former professional boxer Anthony Brent Cooper and his lovely wife Leanne Cooper are here to share an encouraging word with you to help you get up after life has knocked you down. Hi, I'm Anthony. And I'm Leanne. And we want to welcome you to On On the the Ropes, Ropes, where we coach you through God's Word on how to come off the ropes into victory. And today, Anthony, we want to talk about getting off the ropes of depression. Depression is rampant in our country. It is such a big problem. And I know because I even struggled with it myself. I used to have this idea that I had to be perfect in every area of our life, that as a woman of God, I had to have it all together. You know, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5.21 that He made us to be righteous. We are righteous because of Jesus. And when I got a revelation of that, Anthony, it took all this pressure off me. And I felt like it was so much easier to choose joy knowing that I've already been made righteous in Him. That's great. You know, we've learned from our pastor that, you know, it is a choice to rejoice. You know, it's not based on what's going on around you. It's based on the King of Kings living on the inside of you. When you become a born-again child of God, Jesus lives in you, and His joy is in you, but you you have to release that. Just because He's in there, and everything that He has in you, doesn't mean it's gonna affect your life until you release it. And there's a great principle in Philippians 4.4, and and the Apostle Paul wrote this in one of the worst prisons of all time. He says, rejoice in the Lord. Again, I say, 
rejoice. That's a Bible principle right there. Say it, say it. The more you say that and you meditate on the joy of the Lord, you get around joyful people, you come to Joy Church in Mount Juliet, and that joy is released in your life. And it takes you from where you are to where you can be. And I'd encourage you, you know, don't hang around woe is me people. Mm -hmm. People with victim mentalities, you know, or listen to old Hank Williams songs, you know, I'm so lonesome I could cry, or right. what a rotten day this has turned out to be. Because you, you meditate on that stuff, it becomes a part of your life. Right. Joshua 1.8 says you meditate on the word day and night, you'll be prosperous. You meditate on the world day and night, you'll be empty. Right, and the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 5.18, in everything give thanks. And we always have something to be thankful for. I mean, if you wake up in the morning, you should thank God that you wake up. Amen. I mean, if you're a born again believer, you can thank God that one day you'll spend an eternity with him. And if you're not a born again believer, you can change that today. Right now. The Bible says in Romans 10.9, if you'll confess Jesus as your Lord, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Confess him as your Lord. Get into the Word of God, and that's how you'll come off the ropes. Hey, do you have a story to tell? Everybody has a story to tell. I'm certain that something has happened in your life that you can use to help others. A number of years ago, I had a story that I felt like God wanted me to tell. And so I decided I was going to write a book. The problem was that everywhere I went, everyone that I talked to discouraged me from writing my book. And today I have now written nine books. Three of them have been Amazon category bestsellers. And I want to teach you how to create your own book. Number one, you can either come to one of our create your own book workshops, which we do all over the country uh, at different times every month or you can attend uh, one of our webinars online. Just go to inyourcorner.tv and there's a link there for a free webinar where I can show you how to write your book or look on the workshop tab and see the upcoming dates for our Create Your Own Book Workshop. I look forward to seeing you at the next Create Your Own Book Workshop.